Hi everyone, it's Leslie and welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be talking to you about those annoying threads that you have when you finish a beautiful piece of loom work, which was so much fun to make. And then you have lots and lots of threads to take care of. What do you do? Um, I know it's the most annoying thing about working with on a loom. Um, so first of all, I want to talk to you about a couple of things. I want to talk to you about the warp and weft threads and your consideration to get a nice thread that's left over that's nice and straight and a piece of loom work that has really nice tension like this. So <clears throat> for me, the most important thing is the warp thread, which are these threads that are left over. You want to think about using a thread that is not stretchy. This is what I use. This is a Coates Dual Duty Plus hand quilting thread that I get at Joann's. Um, it's kind of, it, I wish it was a little bit thicker. The good news is it doesn't, when you pull it, it doesn't stretch. It's completely still. And when you warp a balloon, you don't want a, a, a thread that'll stretch because otherwise you'll get puckering. And then you'll have this kind of thread that's kind of, um, it can be kind of stretched out on this, on this, on these ends. So you don't want to use a thread like Nymo. This is a, this is Nymo on the spool size D. This is the thickest Nymo you can get. This stretches, see? I tend to use this for my weft threads. So the threads that go back and forth, I tend to use this and I take off a big long piece and I stretch it beforehand. But you can't really do that when you're warping up a loom. Um, so it's nice and thick. Um, it's cheap. Um, so it, it will make a nice sturdy bracelet. But I definitely, I used to use this when I first started, I used to, would use this for warp and I had terrible problems with the tension. So those are two things to really consider. When you're to have a, to, so when you're done, you'll have something nice to tie off. And the other thing that's really important to have is a wide eye needle. Here's a little package. I order these from Fire Mountains. This is a wide eye needle. What that means is you have all these threads, and the last thing you want to do is is um, thread all those threads through a needle. So if you have a wide eye needle, that will really help you. Okay, everyone, I wanted to show you this one more time. It looks like it was out of the frame. This is the wide eye needle package. This is from Fire Mountain. But I think you can get these at a regular bead store, too. So I'm going to work on this uh, peacock bracelet today. And I get your magnifying visor or your reading glasses, like me. Um, and... This is the kind of thing I like to do while I'm watching TV in the evening. I rarely do this in my studio because it's kind of tedious and boring. I have to say of all the, of all the beading things I do. Okay. I just want to make sure you can see this. Okay. So this is how I think about it. I've got my wide eye needle. So the first thing I want to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be threading these threads up between the beads. in as, as organized a way as I can. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick a thread kind of from the center. Put it through my wide eye needle. That's the nice thing. And then it's going to get crowded as you go. So these first ones hold the wide eye needle flat. You'll see it's kind of a flat side to it. Skip the first row and go under the thread of row two and then continue up. If your tension is right, if everything is nice, you should just be able to slide this needle up underneath those threads. Like this. And you can kind of see light reflecting off of it. You'll see that you've got, you're picking up the threads. Now this bracelet is 30 beads wide.
So I've got more than 30 threads to take care of. So I'm just going to kind of go up as high as I can with this since it's the first one. And again, you kind of turn it and I can see it's reflected in the light that I'm picking up every row. Don't skip. Don't skip any. And I've gone up kind of as high as I can go. And I'm going to pull that up. Make sure that tension is just right. And then it's gonna it's gonna hook down here in the first row. And then up here, since I'm right-handed, I'm gonna put that through the, the row the row, the last row I went through, and I'm gonna put it through the rows and it's gonna come out the side. So that's the first one. Okay, so you can do a couple more like that in the center. And then you also want to consider these ones over at the side because these are going to be a little harder to put in. So let's do one over here. I like to kind of alternate. I do one at the end and these, these I keep a little bit lower down again. because there's only one bead on the side, it's a little more difficult. And the tension is a little wonky on the end, usually. Not as nice, anyway. So I'm just going to go up a few like this. Again, I can see that I got every one. And then I'm going to go across. And it's going to come out the side. Over there. Okay, two are done. I'm going to do a couple more here. The wide eye needle is really key in this. Again, hold it flat. Slide it, just slide it up. With this one, I'm going to aim to go one row below the one I did, the first one I did. And I'm kind of looking in the light, seeing if I caught every one. I did. This is the kind of thing I wish I had an assistant to do for me. I'd hire someone to do this. <laughs> that would be nice. Okay, just kind of leave it. Don't pull too tight down there at the bottom. Again, over to the side. So we've got two over here on the side. Okay, after I've done a couple on the one side, I'm going to turn it over and go to the other side. Here again, I'm going to pick up one in the center. You want to make sure you've got some good light so you can see what you're doing. Like I said, you're going to keep looking at the needle and see that there's a thread that you're, that you're not missing any rows. Like I said, it's kind of tedious. But with the right equipment, Actually, goes pretty quick, quick, pretty quickly if you're listening to a podcast or watching TV or something. Okay, did I get everyone? I did. Okay. Pull up 
there, down in the row below. Again, out to the side. Okay, so again, I'm going to alternate. I'm going to go out to the edge here on this side. The other good thing about this method of doing it is it's going to reinforce the ends of your beadwork. It'll make it a little thicker. You're adding extra thread. Again, in row two. You're adding a few pieces, you're adding some pieces of thread in here, so it'll reinforce everything. So I'm going right below. Pull that right up there. through. And if if this is hard to pull out, you can get a plier, get a pair of pliers and pull that out because after you put a lot of threads in here, you might need to, uh, you might need a little help pulling that needle out so you don't strain your, the fine muscles in your hand. I'm very conscious of that as uh, I'm always trying to keep my muscle strain down. They do so much beating and hand work. Okay, so I'm going to keep going with this. I'm going to keep turning it over, going from the center, doing one in the center, one in the outside, one in the center, one in the outside. And I will come back to talk to show you what it looks like and to talk to you about the, the, uh, the last pieces on the edge, the last pieces that you'll need to weave in. Okay guys, here I am with my last two threads on the bottom, and then I've got my side threads. So this has gotten considerably stiffer as I've, as I've put the threads into the work. I didn't say before, you want to reserve the four rows at the bottom for your side threads, so don't put anything in those first four rows. Let's see, I think I'm going to row six here with these last couple. Like I said, as you go along, it gets increasingly difficult to put the threads in. So that's why you want to do the ones kind of high up first and then work your way down. But it does have a lovely stiffness now that it's all reinforced. that one and some of them do have two threads where I've gone one this way and one this way but uh, I don't like to do more than two threads per row okay my last one here I think this is gonna row go in row five two three Okay, and to the side. I like to go the long, whichever way is the longest. Again, for reinforcement. And now I started using my little pair of pliers too, just to help me. Oh, wow, and my needle is caught. There we go. Okay, now. On the outside edge, I like to do a double warp thread. So I've got two warp threads on each end, and then I've got my weft thread left over here. So what I'm going to do is, first thing I'm going to do is one of the warp threads is just going to be in row one. It's going to go through row one. go some length down, three quarters of the way down or so. You don't have to, I'm saying you don't have to go all the way down to the end. And go back in row two. You've got all those 
those extra threads in there, so it might be a little bit difficult to push through. There. All right, that's one taken care of. And let's go over to the other side and do the same thing. This is re and this is reinforcing your edge also. Go two thirds or three quarters of the way down row one. And then back through row two. There you go. Back to the first edge. Again, now I'm going to go even less in because we've got a lot of thread. We're getting a lot of threads in here now. I'm going to go as far as it's easy for me to go in row one. Backwards in row two, a few, four, five, six beads. And row three is free, more, a little more free. So then we're going to go out row three. I'll take it all the way to the end. You don't even have to take it all the way to the end. It's just encountering some little difficulties, so I'm going to just pull that through. Okay, in row three. Okay, so that end, that edge is taken care of. And over here I've got one more warp thread and then I've got that last weft thread. I'll take care of the warp threads first. Like I said again, it's reinforcing it. So you're going to have a nice stiff straight edge. Which, for, which is what I want, because I'm going to make this a button bracelet. Go back in row two just a little bit. Oh, it's getting a little tight there. That's okay. And take that down through row three as far as it will go. That wasn't so bad to pull it out the end. Okay, now this is getting really stiff. Okay, I've only got one more thread left. Now, this last weft thread, <clears throat> it comes, it doesn't go down like this, like the warp thread did. It comes out of row one. So you want to put that in row two a little bit. I'm just going to go a little ways in row two. Back a little ways in row three. And this one I'm going to take up to row four. I just want to kind of distribute evenly where all the threads are going. A little bit of trouble. Okay. Oops. A lot of threads in there now. There we go. There. Perfect. And that's pretty much it. So it'll, you'll end up with just a bunch of threads sticking out the side, on either side, like that. You need a nice sharp pair of scissors. And then you can go along and clip them real nice and close. And that's it. Good luck. I know it's tedious, but honestly, uh, once I got off camera, it was a lot easier. I could hold it a lot closer to my face and <laughs> hold it in the light better. So it was a lot easier doing it while I wasn't filming it than it is while I am. I have several bracelets to do, and I tend to do them over time. I do, um, you know, one or two a day when I have to get them ready. This way you'll end up with a nice reinforced edge. There. And you don't have
have to tiny knots and it won't come out either. Okay. I'll be cutting off the rest of those, but you can see how it's going to look. Thank you for watching, and let me know if you have any questions, and I hope I'll see you again soon.